hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Blue Cold presents The Shadow, the man of mystery who strikes terror in the very hearts of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, the Temple Bells of Levi. <laughs> Friends, if you want to be sure that the fuel you get to heat your home this winter is safe, healthy, and economical fuel, then by all means, buy Blue Coal, the finest of Pennsylvania hard coal. Remember, this superior quality anthracite has been colored a harmless blue at the mines so that you can recognize it at a glance. So take the guesswork out of your fuel buying. Get America's finest anthracite. Ask for Blue Coal by name. Order a supply tomorrow. The very shadow... The bells of Nita. They will reveal you. Your third mistake, Sadi. And your last. <laughs> no, it is your mistake. And your last. This is the end of your career as the shadow. Just a large evening, a couple of hours at the Club Caliph. Does that intrigue you? It's lovely, but not too late. I have an appointment at 10 in the morning at the women's club. They're trying to get some action on this terrible narcotic situation. Yes, I read about that. Oh, stuff being peddled all over town. They found school children using it, society women. Why, it's already caused a half dozen suicides. Yes, I know. It's terrible stuff. Oh, it needs the shadow to get at the bottom of it. Yes, I know, dear, but for tonight, I, I do enjoy just being myself. Lamont Cranston, Dilettante. Let's be the shadow only in real emergency. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they tell me there's a lovely Indian dancer at this new club, Keeley's. Indian dancer? Mm-hmm. You know, there's the place just there. Club Keeley's driver. Yes, sir. Lamont, you are going to do something about it. You've started already. Perhaps. Well, here we are. Before I drive up. Hey, what? Thank you, sir. Oh, that looks like young Jerry Gleason just going in. Yes? I was that young man's father. I'd spank him and keep him home occasionally. Well, son of a wealthy sire. Mm. Yeah, let me have your coat. I'll check it with mine. Good evening, Jerry. Oh, oh hello, Miss Lane. Your father and sister well? I haven't seen them lately. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't wait right now. I've got to see someone, and it's important. I'm sorry. Uh, but, Jerry... Hello. How are you, young Pete? I don't know. He seems awfully upset about something. He doesn't look well, either. Pale and shaking. You're right, he doesn't. I'm curious about that boy. Well... Let's do it. <laughs> May I show you to a table, sir? Uh, take this table by the dance floor, thank you. Oh, there's someone getting up to speak. We seem to just in time to make a trip. Sure, Ladies and gentlemen, we take pleasure in presenting the fascinating and beautiful dancer of the Far East, Sadi Bel Ada. For our first number tonight, she will give you. The dance of the cobra, Zadi Bel Ada. <laughs> Look, isn't she lovely? Yes, real thing too, real Hindu. Hmm. It's odd, you know. What? Look, she's taking a snake out of that wicker basket. A live cobra. Oh heaven! You know the cobra is connected with the old Indian mysticism. The most ancient of magic. See how she quiets the snake. Makes it sway to the motion of a hand. Mm. It's a form of mesmerism. We've never improved on it with all our modern psychology. I hope it's stronger than you know. Well, they undoubtedly have. So, this is the one they call Sadi Belada. Jerry Gleason with that strange look in his eyes. An epidemic of narcotics in the room. Sadi Bellata. Oh, how graceful she is. 
<laughs> she keeps looking over here in the morning. Yes. It's coming this way. Well. Wow. Souvenir for the beautiful lady, sir. Oh, Oh, a bracelet. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, fair lady. Ah, you know the tongue of Mother India, sir. Only enough to make a small prayer. Only enough for that, Sadi Bel Ada. It is good sometimes to know a small prayer. Hmm. Just in case of an emergency? Yes. You are very wise, sir. In case you should meet someone who could destroy you, sir. I see. Bella, just what did she mean by that? I don't know exactly. Funny something. She seems to know something about me. I'm trying to recall where I've seen that face. <laughs> by the door. Why, it's young Jerry Gleason. She handed him uh, something. Good Lord. He's going out with her. What's the matter? It just struck me, Margot. That boy's face. The color of his skin. You mean drugs? Yes. The poppy of India. Oh, but not Jerry Gleason. Oh, that'd be too awful. And our old friend Claire Gleason, his aunt, who's tried so hard to steer him straight since his mother died, it would just about kill her. Come, Margot. We must do something. We're more. going to. I did come here tonight with a vague idea that this Indian dancer might have some connection with the thing. With her veiled threats and Jerry's interest in her, I'm pretty sure but now. What are you going to do? I think the shadow will pay a call on Sadi Bellada in her dressing room. I think the shadow can strike back. Yes. Either you lie, 
Or you desecrate a great gift. Put your strength against mine, White Ifandi, and you will see how I desecrate that gift. I can cast your little spells aside and make them nothing. I can kill you. Kill me? The Shadow Sadi? Yes. If you dare to come to me again, will you come? Who could refuse such an invitation? Especially when made by so charming a lady as yourself. Yes, I will come. And be sure you don't mistake my voice. When I do come, Sadi Bellada. <laughs> Well, what is it, Sergeant? Uh, excuse me, Commissioner. Old man Gleason is outside and insists he's got to see you. Gleason? You mean Andrew Gleason? Sure, the big Wall Street banker, a friend of the mayor. Shall I let him come in? Or... All this claim deficiency where it isn't any good. I want to see you, Commissioner. All right, Mr. Gleason. What the devil is this town coming to? Well, if you'll tell me what you're getting at. My I... boy is what I'm getting at. He's lying home there with the worst case of delirium premiums I ever saw. Spent the night sopping up liquor in these rotten hunky towns. Mr. Gleason, if you think the police department's going around playing wet nurse to all the spoiled kids in this town... It... Is this what you came to see me about, Mr. Gleason? It certainly is. Well, I happen to have more important things on my mind right now. Then you better get this on your mind. Because if you don't, I'll see to it that there's somebody here who does. And I can do it. Good day to you. Well, seems like this was a busy day, sir. What with uh, drunken college boys and millionaires. This is another of those, uh, Commissioner Weston speaking. <laughs> Why, you, you... Don't lose your patience, Commissioner. The shadow has information that may help you. Young Jerry Gleason is becoming a drug addict. What? Yes. A victim of this flood of drugs being peddled on our streets. It might cost you your job. Are you interested, Commissioner... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting for the shadow to return, I want to relay a bit of information I'm sure homeowners here in the New England states will find particularly interesting. When buying your winter supply of fuel, bear this in mind. Anthracite coal is unequaled for home use. It is not a flashy fuel that burns furiously for a little while, then dies down completely. On the contrary, folks, anthracite burns slowly, steadily, evenly, all day long, and so enables you to maintain an even, healthful room temperature. That's why anthracite is called the solid fuel for solid comfort. And friends, remember this. Furnaces, cook stoves, and space heaters in this section of the country were especially designed to burn anthracite. So... Insist on anthracite, but get the best. Order Blue Coal. It's America's finest. Blue Coal is mined by the Glen Alden Company, the world's largest producers of Pennsylvania anthracite. To guarantee you the greatest heating satisfaction at the lowest cost, Blue Coal is laboratory tested for purity and uniformity of size. So you see, friends, there's no need to take chances on unknown fuels. Order Blue Coal today. You will find the name of your nearest Blue Coal dealer listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coast. Your apartment is going to 
weird temple bell? Where did they come from? How did you do it? Not too difficult, my dear. Others have learned a secret. Based on the phenomenon of telepathy combined with the old science of the yoga, the same magic which gives voice to a shadow. It's a very awe inspiring demonstration. If there should be someone who could command the temple bells of Nabon, the shadow would cease to be a shadow. You mean. You mean make a sense? Yes. At the last stroke of the bell, I would be only what I am. Lamont Cranston. My magic invisibility, so to speak. Dispelled by this greater power. And, and you think there is someone with this power? I'm not sure. Years ago, in India, a yogi priest, keeper of the temple of the cobras at Delhi, taught me the ancient mysteries. He taught me the mesmeric trick that the underworld calls invisibility. There was a small girl, his niece, who used to sit and listen, staring up at us with her round, dark eyes. She was very clever. Clever. I've often wondered what became of her. The cobra. You don't know the Indian down there at the club camp. I'm not sure, Margot. I'm not sure. Oh, but this worries me, Lamont. Aren't you going into danger too big for you? Don't worry about me, Margot. Worry about the boy and all other poor, miserable wretches in the toils of this awful drug traffic. Is young Beeston safe? Yes, his father made him go to bed. They thought he'd been drinking too much. Well, it's the time I got busy. Have you found out anything else? One or two things. In Sade Delada's dressing room, I found a note signed by Captain Mullen of the freighter Alvore Castle. I think there's some connection there. I'm going to find out. First, though, I'm going to the zoo. The zoo? Yes. Yes, I want to borrow a decorative little reptile from my friend the curator. He's usually very obliging. Open that door. Look. Hanging from the door now. Snake. Don't touch it. All right. It's a dead one. The note with it. So, she's not bluffing. She does know who I am. Oh, Lamont, I, I'm frightened for you. What does it say? It says, dead cobras are better placings than live ones. Was I mistaken? Then it's not a bad idea. Oh, Lamar. Margo, it's a challenge. But the bell. The bells of Nibon. Oh, I'm afraid the shadow this time will get beyond his death. We shall see, Margo. We shall see who is stronger. Are they and the bells of Nibon? Or the shadow? Show them. They think they can keep me a prisoner in my own house. Putting me to bed as if I was some half grown kid. What? What's that? Jerry. Do you hear me? Is it you, Sadi? Yes. My voice in your thoughts. Listen, Jerry. Come to me at the dock where we met before. Your medicine is waiting. Yes. Yes. Go aboard the ship I told you about. The Albora Castle. You and I, Jerry. Yes. Yes. I am waiting, Jerry. But they locked me in. Go through the window, Jerry. Come now. Yes, Daddy. The window.
But I have followed him to the waterfront, and I know where he's going. Get word to Commissioner Wetson. Time is short. I accept Sadi's challenge. Send harbor police to the freighter Albore Castle, which lies in the harbor just off Bay Ridge Shore, ready to sail. Hurry, Margo. We were far at sea, on our way to Rio. Oh, be patient. There are some notes of delivered to Papagi? Yes. What are they? But there is nothing. Oh, it's you, Captain. Yeah. We are leaving, Captain. Yes, we're getting on the way now. We've got the boys stowed safely below, below decks. And the rest of the medicine? Oh, uh, we got rid of that. What was left of it? A nice cleanup for all hands, not counting this Gleason job. That'll net us another hundred thousand, or nothing. Oh, well, we're fixed whichever way the dice roll. And after that, we live like kings, without a care, yes? Yeah? Not even a conscience to bother you. What? Savvy, he has come. I was afraid. Who said that? I did, Captain. <laughs> So you're the one with your trick ghost talk and magic, eh? I made a shadow out of you soon enough. Not that way, Captain. No? Here, lock that door. Next. It is locked, Captain Marlin. But, but the portal. No one can get through those. Not even a shadow. <laughs> Save your laugh, whoever you are. We've got you. You're in this cabin somewhere. And this ship is outward bound. Laugh, that's all. I think you may have made three mistakes, Captain. One too many. Yes. Yes, Captain. But I do not make mistakes, sir. That remains to be seen, Sabe Bellata. Then you will see. And me the wicker basket, Alex. Uh, what do you want to do? Yes, Sabe. I call the temple bells of Niban, Captain. The shadow has the power to blind your eyes. A trick he learned in India from a yogi who was my uncle. But I have a better trick. When the last bell sounds while the sacred cobra dances, you will see the shadow only as a man. Be ready to shoot, Captain. I am ready. And now, my cobra... To dance with the bells of Niba. I wouldn't open that basket if I were you, Sadi Bellada. You watch my pretty cobra, son. He may find you even before the captain's bullet. You would die just as quickly. <laughs> Dead cobras are better playthings than live ones. Bismillahi Ramani Rahim. Make your small prayer, sad. And now, my pretty one, begin to dance. Be careful, Sally Bell. The cobra moves towards you. My own pretty cobra. He knows me. You hear the bells, Shadow? The temple bells of Niban? I hear them. When the last bell strikes, we shall see our prisoner. And I am waiting for that minute. But Sadi, the cobra! Look out! He's going to strike! Alexis! Stop it! Oh, quick! Put the basket over Alexis! Kill it! The shadow warned you, Sadi Pelada. You take credit for this too, do you? No. Sadi should have known it was not her cobra, 
in the wicker basket. It was mine. He's dead. Who is it? Captain Allen, the police are bothered. No, please, Captain Mullen, you do not shoot. Stop the gas on that gun. I'll take that. Put the bracelets on both of them, Sergeant. Right. Dope smugglers, kidnappers, and from the looks, murderers. (laughs) This time, the police were too smart for you. Oh, decidedly. Huh? Who's that? Thanks for coming, Commissioner. You were very helpful. (laughs) The story you have just heard is copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to the person who's living or dead is purely coincidental. Arthur Whiteside.